Hey dudes, the Canon C70 has been universally accepted as a great entry-level cinema camera. There are now so many things to love about it, and it just keeps getting better with every firmware update. So in this video, we're going to test out the new stop motion feature to see what Canon's got right and what they've got wrong. And if Canon has done anything deliberately to cripple this new feature for animators. Let's get into it. So with Canon releasing the stop motion feature as part of the C70's latest firmware update, how does it stack up against Old Faithful here? Will I finally be able to replace my 5D Mark II with a better all-round camera like the C70 with no compromises? Here's my first animation with the C70. It didn't go as I had planned. The experience reminded me of animating with my Bolex and Canon 514XL. The first problem I encountered is that by default, Canon has set the animation trigger button as the record button here. And this is not ideal because the last thing you want to be doing while animating is touching the camera. Knowing this, I tested the C70 in this configuration, but no matter how gently I pushed on the camera trigger, 100% of the shots produce camera shake. This button is just too stiff on the C70 to be used as an animation camera trigger. It's not light to the touch. This type of camera shake is almost impossible to remove in post. And if you look closely at the results playing on screen, you can see that Resolve has resized the camera to stabilize the shot. Needless to say, it doesn't look great. Setting the default trigger to a relatively firm record button is not setting the user up for success. You actually need additional equipment to produce better results like these. Next, I tried the touchscreen record standby button and got much better results. If you don't know how to activate this setting, go into the menu, system setup, that's the spanner looking icon. Go to page six and second from the bottom is the on-screen record button controls. But if you want zero camera shake, you need to separate the camera trigger from the camera. There is only three ways that you can do this. The first is via a wireless connection to a compatible smartphone or tablet. This will enable wireless control over the camera, image settings and server lenses. Unfortunately, I don't have a USB-C to Wi-Fi or Ethernet cable adapter to connect to my iPad, which I think is actually the best option for animators. Your next connection option is the remote port on the side of the camera. It's just over here underneath the headphone jack where you can connect a wide trigger like the Canman camera handle. And when set to capture a single frame, the user can choose how many frames to record for each character movement or object movement, whatever you're animating. Admittedly, this setup was a bit janky, but it's all I had on hand and produced the best results for me in this test. Your only other option or your final option is the Canon RC V100 multifunction remote controller. This controller will give you full access to all important functions, including start stop, shutter gain adjustments, zoom focus and iris, custom picture values, white balance, black gamma, and many, many more, which is exactly what you need when you're animating. But it's pretty expensive at a whopping 1,890 US dollars. So when you compare these connection options to a 5D Mark II, the C70 for animation is expensive. As a 5D remote will run you anywhere from 10 to 120 US dollars, to get full control over the camera, you need additional software like Dragonframe IO. With all that out of the way, how did the stop motion images from the C70 stack up against this 13 year old or 15 year old 5D Mark II? In comparison, a speed boosted C70 with the identical camera settings recording in an XFAVC 422 10-bit codec in C-Log2, the C70 is clearly noisier in the shadows than the 5D Mark II when using CineStyle and RAW. Now, noise reduction would fix the C70 footage in a heartbeat. No dramas at all. But this did surprise me, not only because we're talking about sensors that are 13 years apart, but also because normally compression masks the noise floor. What is abundantly clear is the C70 has way more usable dynamic range than the 5D Mark II. However, because the 5D Mark II is capturing 14-bit RAW, you end up with more usable latitude and post. You can just push the RAW codec much further, which shows the flexibility of RAW is irreplaceable. That has got to make you think. 
Why did Canon omit raw recording in this new interval and stop motion feature? It's very disappointing, and if you have any ideas about why you think Canon's done this, please drop it in the comments below. If you go into the camera menu, to the media recording page, then go to the recording mode and choose frame recording, you will then be able to change the frame rate, essentially how many frames the camera will capture in between your character's movements when you hit the trigger button. For example, if I hit the trigger button now, it will record one frame. You could animate in what's called twos or two frames per action, or only animate 12 images for every 24 frames. Then either duplicate frames or slow the footage down by 50% without being out of phase. When you compare the sharpness of the 5D Mark II versus the C70 animation files, the 5D Mark II is clearly sharper, and it should be, and that shouldn't be surprising. The 5D Mark II is a 22.1 megapixel camera versus an 8.85 megapixel C70. By no means does this suggest that the images from the C70 aren't sharp or usable, because they are. In fact, I prefer the slightly softer image, better highlight roll off, and the more pastel toned look that the C70 produces over the 5D Mark II when using my normal post workflow. For me, the overall image quality goes to the C70. But the one place the C70 cannot compete with the Canon 5D is sensor size. Even with the speed booster, the C70 field of view is much narrower than the 5D. Here's an example of how the field of views differ between the two cameras. The reason why the difference looks so drastic is because the 5D Mark II when shooting stills is in open gate mode and is no longer constrained by a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. It's 4.3 and it's much larger than VistaVision, meaning it could do a true anamorphic capture. Therefore, you're going to have a lot more flexibility in post reframing your animations with a 21 megapixel 4.3 digital negative opposed to an 8.85 megapixel 16 by 9 digital negative. But this is also where the negative becomes a positive for the C70. The XFAVC files are much smaller than the CR2 RAW files. And if you're doing a lot of animation work for a minimal loss in quality, I mean, it's almost indistinguishable. You, you're going to save thousands, thousands per project in media and hard drive storage. I mean, look at the difference in file sizes, guys, for almost the same animation. It's just not comparable. The C70 wins all day long, all day long. The benefits don't stop only with the file sizes. The XFAVC codec is much easier to work with in post than the CR2 RAW files. One place my computer is always getting bogged down is when I need to do effects in Fusion on my animation files. It plays absolutely smoothly and doesn't consist of any individual large frames requiring a lot of bandwidth, which helps me because I need to remove the animation assist tool in post. So this is going to be far easier for me to achieve with the XFAVC codec opposed to the raw files which just completely killed my M1 Mac Mini in Fusion. But I still wish Canon gave us the choice between a raw workflow or a compressed workflow. So would I recommend animating with the Canon C70? Absolutely. The Canon C70 is a fantastic camera. I did all of these animations on one charge and the BPA30 outlasted my Canon 5D, which is rare. It even has more video animation centric exposure tools, which come in really handy. The overall animation experience was a little bit tougher than say my 5D, my EOS R or my R5. But that's because this camera is slightly larger and requires bigger grip equipment than what I currently have on hand. But that's not the C70's fault. Overall, I'm just blown away by the image quality, which at the end of the day is the most important thing to me. Once I figure out a better trigger system or a way to connect remotely, it'll be as good, if not better, than anything I've ever captured from my 5D Mark II, and that's even with a crop sensor. And even though there is no internal RAW for stop motion or time-lapse videos, the XFAVC produces some of the nicest looking host-friendly small data files that I've seen in a very long time. 
So if you don't need a full frame animation camera, then by all means, use a C70. You can have the best of both worlds, a camera to create stop motion movies with, but also a powerhouse of a production camera. The dynamic range in the animation files is identical to the 10-bit XFAVC files from the normal recording mode, which have been praised by everyone. The only thing I question is why Canon omitted the raw recording from the new time-lapse and animation features, as these are two areas where raw recording is actually really important. I think if Canon was able to change this, the C70 could almost, almost be a perfect camera for a vast number of emerging creators. And with that, guys, see you in the next one.